Good morning. I don't even know if you can hear me because of how loud that is. Yeah, this is clearly not my bedroom. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot we need to catch up on. <laughs> So I get to see what we're eating today. We have, ooh, chocolate shreddies. We have some soy milk. We have some regular milk, some bread with butter. I'm just chucking. Oh, it looks like avocado with poached egg on brown bread, which is delicious. I'm very down for that. So whilst I start eating my breakfast, I guess we better <laughs> explain what's going on. So I'm in South Korea. Uh, I'm currently in a mandatory government quarantine, which means that I am basically locked in total social isolation in one singular room. The windows don't open, so I can't get even a small breeze, and I, I haven't seen another person for a while. This quarantine is mandatory for anyone who comes to South Korea. It doesn't matter if you're vaccinated or not, it doesn't matter whether you've tested negative or not, everyone who comes to South Korea has to do a mandatory quarantine, and if you don't have an apartment here, you have to do your quarantine in a government facility, like the one I'm in now. I also want to say I'm not here for fun, I'm not having a holiday here, this is not something that I'm doing because I'm having a great jolly time. I haven't really ever talked about this on my YouTube, but I have talked about it a lot on my Twitch, and essentially <laughs> when the pandemic started last year, not only were we kind of dealing with that at pretty much the exact same time my sister came out as a trans woman. As everything unraveled with Rona, my sister was trying to get access to healthcare to start her transition, which is notoriously difficult whether or not you're in a panini or not. I'm trying to explain it without giving too much away because there's going to be two videos out on my channel, I think in September, maybe October, about why I'm here. It's a very personal video and it's unlike anything I've ever put on my channel before and I hope that you will support it. But for now, the information that I'm going to give you, my sister is having a life-changing surgery and I need to be here. So let's go over the basics. In this hotel you have to be here for 14 days. Every single day you have to submit a health check. You are not allowed to leave the room at all. You are not allowed to see another person, you are not allowed to do anything at all, really, except just exist in this room. The only time you are allowed to open your door is when meals are served to your door, and those meals are dropped in plastic bags like the one you just saw, uh, and they don't knock to let you know it's there, so they have specific times that you're allowed to open your door to check if your meal is there. Every single day there are multiple of these, which are government announcements. And these announcements go in pretty much every language you could think of. The announcements are for different things, so there's one every day at a meal time. There is also one about not smoking or drinking. There is another one saying that if you come out of your room, you're subject to deportation. I've pretty much memorized them at this point. <laughs> I've been here like two, three days, um, and I've, I've got it under lock. Is this going to be annoying, me trying to talk over this? I should probably just wait till it's finished. And in the meantime, I'll just eat my shreddies. When we arrived at the hotel, the woman in the hazmat suit gave us the option of being roomed together. But me and Leah both mutually agreed that the only thing worse than not seeing another person for 14 days was to be trapped inside with each other for 14 days. So <laughs> we both have separate rooms, which, you know, I now I'm slightly starting to regret, I can't lie, because as much as I like my own space, it's getting pretty lonely. Now you may be wondering what I'm going to be doing for entertainment whilst locked in a room for 14 days. And the simple answer to that is online shopping. Now I'm a seasoned online shopper and that means I don't just add things to my basket and pay for them. Absolutely not. I'm not a fool. I have Honey, the sponsor of this part of today's video. <laughs> Honey is a free browser extension app that automatically scours the internet for discount codes on things that you're already buying. I've been eyeing up this jacket from the North Face for <laughs> like literal months now. I'm obsessed with it. And I finally decided that because I was in quarantine and there wasn't much happiness around, I, I would treat myself and I would get it. But when I went to check out, Honey popped up my little money-saving guardian angel, and was like, hey, I could catch you a sweet deal on this. And I ended up getting 15% off. It was like free money. There is no better feeling than when you get money off of things that you were already going to buy. You can get money off of shoes or, or video games, food deliveries or jackets like I did. And if you don't believe me, even though I'm a, 
a very trustworthy source of information. Honey has over a hundred thousand five-star reviews on Google. That's a lot of reviews. So if you want to get your free savings, because that's literally what it is, I'm doing you a service by telling you about this. I am helping you put money back into your wallet. You're welcome. <laughs> you can add Honey to your browser for free at joinhoney.com forward slash Albert or by clicking the link in the description down below. Thank you to Honey for sponsoring this part of today's video um, and also thank you for <laughs> saving me money on my quarantine splurges. <laughs> Someone open their door. So they might be leaving. Okay. I didn't see anyone. I'm really brushing my teeth because the milk made my mouth feel awful. So, we'll see if this works. Also, yes, I did forget my toothbrush and I'm having to borrow one from the hotel toothbrush kit. Fun little quirky updates that you might appreciate. The highlight of my day is looking through the peephole every time I hear movement in the corridor. Sometimes you catch a glimpse of someone leaving, which is like a, a gentle reminder that one day you will see outside again. And that keeps me going. I heard someone coughing a lot the other day, which was very concerning. Um, and super fun fact, the person next door to me um, practices violin every day. Every day. First couple of days it was a bit rough, I can't lie. They were really not hitting those notes. Yesterday was quite enjoyable. Did a much better job yesterday and I was sat there and I was, you know, enjoying it. For those who don't know, I used to play violin. Emphasis on used to, um, because I was terrible. I need to have a shower, but I'm gonna try and work up the the muster to, is that the word? Muster? I'm gonna try and find the motivation to exercise, because currently I've been wearing the same clothes for three days. <laughs> it's going super well. On the plus side, I do have a bath and a shower. And I was originally told there were no baths, so. I think I might have scored there. God, this is so boring. If anyone watches this, I'm so sorry. I did bring some of my own snacks, which was probably the best move I've ever made. Right opposite my room is a swimming pool. And I can see people having fun inside it. As you can see, my room is pretty big. It's a lot larger than I was expecting it to be. I will do a room tour properly once I've sorted my life out a bit, which I'm hoping will be today. But, you know, I'm not entirely optimistic about that. Maybe I'll do a p-volve. If you don't know, I, I kept my p-volve. This will go on for a while, so I'll just, <laughs> I'll talk to you later. is right but I just really struggle to learn new things because <laughs> I get really frustrated when I don't understand things and the idea of the potential of not understanding things makes me so annoyed that I then can't learn things because I'm angry and that's what happens when you're told you're gifted and talented growing up <laughs> right I'm gonna I'm gonna go and try and learn how to work these mics um, and then I will get back to you I think it's pretty simple but you know I'm stupid so it's gonna take me a while so it's about half past three couple of updates uh, number one the tripod that I ordered finally arrived which is great because now I don't have to balance my camera precariously on cardboard boxes. Secondly, I had a very nice call with editor George who edits some of my main channel videos. Um, we spoke for like four and a half hours, <laughs> which is great because it's kind of like taken up a lot of my conscious time during the day. So that's nice. Um, <laughs> problem is I now need to film integration for the integration corner. I charged the mics 
uh, and I, I watched a video on how to get them to work, but I'm still not sure. So I'm gonna use them to record the ad, but I don't know if it's gonna work. So if I hold a mic during the integration of that video and the quality, the sound quality is not at all better, um, just know it's because I didn't set up the mics right. And that is why. I did a bit of dancing earlier instead of like actual exercise <laughs> because I felt like I needed some serotonin, some dopamine. I needed to do a boogie. I have a feeling that this video is just gonna be an exceptionally long descent into chaos. <sighs> I don't know, is that is that a good video? Is that pleasurable? Ple pleasurable is probably not the word I should have used there. There's something about talking to yourself in a room with a camera, but you know what it feels like? It feels like I'm a, an astronaut sent to space making one of those bloody space diaries. You're all alone up there. Just just you and a camera. And it's like, if I didn't talk, there would be silence. This will be the longest that I've ever gone without seeing another person. Which may be bizarre for some of you, like maybe a lot of you go this long without talking to people, but I'm a very sociable person. Like a lot of my energy comes from being around people. I don't even have to talk to them. I just have to be around them and I feel happier. And I'm a bit concerned about how I'm gonna do not seeing anyone for 14 days. If you had to spend a time alone during COVID, you're an incredibly powerful human being. Now I'm, I'm, I'm sat here on day three thinking about, you know, the next 11 days and I'm sat here with this daunting feeling and it's only 11 days. Imagine sitting there and not knowing when the end would be. It is really incredible. If you've managed to do that, you were an incredible human being and I, I fully salute you, but also my heart goes out to you because it's, it's tough. Okay, so I just put some makeup on and I filmed my integration. I feel, actually now I've done something productive, I feel pretty normal. I was feeling quite existential crisis-y earlier, but now I feel much better. Uh, I genuinely feel like sometimes I get in my own head a lot. I have a habit of just like, being sucked into my thoughts and they end up just completely spiraling. So in times like that, I've, I've noticed that for me as a person, I really need to like have the willpower to just pull myself out of my own head because otherwise I just spiral. Those announcements are getting very old very fast. <laughs> it feels really like military, it's quite scary. <laughs> but um, I've got a lot of my work done, which is really nice. Um, this day went by so much faster because I had things to do. So I, I just realized that I just need to keep myself busy. I need to just not sit in the chair and like contemplate every decision I've ever made, um, which on the surface seems like a pretty obvious assessment of the situation. Um, but I'm stupid, so... <laughs> oh, update about dinner. My dinner today was inedible. It was like this creamy fish thing, and I'm really not a fan of fish, really, <laughs> or cream. Um, I felt really ill after the dairy this morning, and just like having more cream for dinner would just have completely destroyed me. So I didn't have any dinner tonight, which kind of sucks. It's just, I hate not being able to like choose my food, and when I run out of snacks, <laughs> I'm... I'm in the danger zone. I realized that within the first couple of days, I kind of ate way too many. And so I'm kind of rationing them a bit now. But I actually don't think I brought enough snacks or enough substantial snacks. Pretty much all I bought was chocolate and oat bars, which was a terrible decision. I also just realized I said all of this from a distance with that government message going on. So I don't know if you even heard any of this. <laughs> Apologies, I'll use the mics tomorrow. Good morning. I have been awoken by the government announcements <laughs> and I can't lie, I'm very grumpy about this and I ended up going to bed around half past three You really can't sleep in here past like 8am because those announcements are just so loud oh, I felt awful I had so much like just anxiety last night whilst going to bed which is so weird because I had like such a productive day and I felt really good and it just feels super soulless this place <sighs> I don't know how to explain it it's very like clinical and stressful and there's nothing comforting about it which I guess is like the point given the circumstance 
but it's very hard not to feel like anxiety because of that and I know it's not their job to make you feel like comfortable it's their job to stop big Rona <laughs> I'm gonna go and get my breakfast from the door and then I think I'm gonna try and go back to sleep they played three announcements this morning so it's just so much talking okay I'm gonna go get my breakfast There's someone in the hall. <gasps> what? It's a government worker in a hazmat suit. <laughs> Let's see what breakfast has in store for us today. <gasps> it's pastries. It's a croissant. Oh, this is exactly what I needed today. It's like a croissant and a mini pan of chocolate and a muffin and some bread. They love giving you bread here. <laughs> and then there's the usual little pot of, of shreddies. Okay, I will try and talk to you guys later. Hopefully when I'm a bit more rested and I don't feel like trash. <laughs> Make it stop. Hello again. I have awoken. How are we all doing on this fine afternoon? I think I slept too long. I don't know what time it is. Oh shh, it's half past 12. I feel like a greasy, sweaty monster. I slept like a log for the last three hours. Cause I was absolutely exhausted. But for some reason I feel just as tired as I did when I woke up at like eight. So that's great. My plan now is to get up and wash my face, brush my teeth, do a little bit of yoga. I might find a yoga thing on, on YouTube and then eat my breakfast. Um, I have to film a video today. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to go because I slept through half the day. <laughs> Oopsie. I was thinking about it before I fell asleep that the government announcements, they're basically here to try and give you like a normal sleeping schedule. They, they stop doing them at like 9 p.m. and then they start them again at 8. So what they're doing is trying to keep you in like a regular sleep cycle because it, it's quite easy here just to lose complete like track of time. So I guess I should be grateful for the government announcements but equally I just don't want them to be there. But day five baby, let's go. Why do I sound like a teenage boy? They taste like classic hotel croissants. So my lunch just arrived and I think I have light cheese. Are these light cheese? Does anyone know what light cheese looks like? And then mac and cheese. And now in this box, we've got, oh, just a sandwich with some, what looks like chicken bites or cheese bites. Hey, I'm happy with this. I feel like the food is getting like significantly better. They're giving me some tomato ketchup. It's a good sandwich. This is good. This is going well. I really wish they'd stop giving me mac and cheese though. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just watch a bit of YouTube, wait for my food to go down, and then start on this video. It's nice to have something to do, but also I'm just exhausted today. I think my sleeping pattern's messed up. Oh, wait, hold on. <gasps> There's a bottle of Sprite in here. I don't know why I'm drinking that. I don't want that right now. I think <laughs> I got a bit excited about the Sprite, but I... <laughs> Still a bit early for fizzy drinks for me. If you want to see what I got up to next, just go and watch the last video. <laughs> Tell me you're in a two week quarantine without telling me you're in a two week quarantine. I thought that it would be a really good idea to start with kind of like a room tour of the hotel and the rules of the facility. The first day I arrived here, I arrived at like 4 p.m. Um, and it was basically just me sleeping because I was so tired from the traveling. And the second day, <laughs> was a total nightmare and I didn't film anything because I was so stressed and worried. Essentially on the second day I discovered that my adapter didn't work which meant that I couldn't charge any of my electronics and I had fallen asleep watching Netflix so my laptop was already dead which was horrendous. Uh <laughs> 
and caused me a lot of stress. You are allowed to order things to the government facility. So I tried to order an adapter um, on G Market, which is basically like this big open market in Korea. But I think I got the address wrong and it said delivered and it never arrived. So <laughs> the cost of staying in this facility for 14 days with three meals given to you a day, it's 120,000 won per day, which isn't that bad, especially when you consider that the UK government facility now is charging 2,000 pounds. So it is an expensive thing. It's like a big, big amount of money for basically just <laughs> prison. Um, <laughs> so I arrived on the 10th of August, which means that I get to leave either at midnight on August 23rd or at 7 a.m. on August 24th. They also give you the numbers for like, if you need help or if you need medical assistance. There are certain rules that you're not allowed to break in this hotel. For example, you are not allowed to come out of your room. Every single day, there are government announcements that go over a tannoid that's in your room. Um, and it says, this is a message from the Korean government support staff. And one of the messages that they play every single day is do not come out of your room. If you come out of your room, you are subject to deportation, which it's quite heavy. The other rules include you're not allowed to play loud music, you're not allowed to smoke and you're not allowed to drink alcohol, which was very unfortunate for me because I was <laughs> Quite looking forward to just drinking my sorrows away. There is a $200 fine for any violation of like smoking or drinking or making too much noise. Every single day, the rubbish that you have, so like your meals, your water bottles, all of that stuff has to be put in a biohazard waste bag and put outside of your door at 6.30. It's an interesting one, putting your, you just, the food you ate in in a biohazard waste bag. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're in some kind of like radioactive incident and no one can come near you. It's. It's certainly interesting. There's an app called Quarantine, which is this one here. And this is an app where you have to submit a health review every single day. So they give you this box and this box is essentially a health kit box. Um, it has a thermometer in it. And basically you have to use the thermometer every single morning and take your temperature as well as submitting if you have any symptoms. They don't give you tea or coffee. Uh, they give you like sachets for tea, but no cups. So. <laughs> I'm not too sure what I'm supposed to do with that. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is provided every single day at roughly the same time. So breakfast is between 8.30 and nine, lunch 12.30 and one, and then dinner is between six and seven. The food service that they offer, they have an Asian meal plan and a Western meal plan. I was on the Asian meal plan for the first two days I was here by accident, I think. Um, and it was nice, like the food was great. There was like a lot of fresh fish and rice, um, but my stomach wasn't doing so great with like fish in the morning. So I rang them and swapped onto the Western meal plan. You don't get to pick your quarantine hotel. There are several hotels dotted throughout Seoul, which are basically um, for quarantining in government isolation. It's randomly assigned to you at the airport. And the hotel that we were randomly assigned was the Grand Hyatt Hotel in Cheon, which is literally like two minutes from the airport. My room is really nice. I'm gonna show you a little room tour in a minute. My only issue is that, <laughs> As with a lot of hotels, the windows don't open. And when you're stuck in a room for two weeks, not having fresh air kind of sucks. But other than that, everything else is pretty groovy. You are allowed to quarantine with like your family members or if you are a couple, you're allowed to stay in the same room together. Um, but because I came with my sister, it didn't really make sense. Could you imagine spending 14 days locked in a room with one of your siblings? And you, and you can't get away from them. Just one singular room, trapped. Two weeks. And you have to share a bathroom. Horrendous. I can't believe I've just done this whole thing looking like this. <laughs> I'm really fully committed to the quarantine. I'm gonna basically do a room tour now. Um, I'm gonna make sure to tidy it up first because I've been living in squalor. Um, <laughs> and then I'll kind of just take you along this journey of what my life is like now. Okay, so you walk in and over here, I've got like all of my food and there is a fridge in here that at the moment I just have yogurt in, really. You go into the main room, TV, drawers. I didn't unpack any of my stuff, so it's all just shoved in a suitcase here. Because the thing is, I'm one of those people that if I unpack stuff, I will end up forgetting it. Like I will leave stuff in a drawer and forget I put it there. And I just don't, I don't want to do that because I can't get it back. Because in a usual hotel, there's a chance you could get it back. But in a quarantine hotel, anything you leave here gets thrown away automatically because it's unsanitary. So I know that I do that. So I just didn't want to risk it. So I've just pretty much left everything in my suitcase. This is the bed. It's a pretty big bed. It's really nice. Bedside table, obviously. 
little chair to look out of the window. There's a pool right here and there's a park there, which means that I get to see people having loads of fun, which is not at all slightly uh, <laughs> reminding me that I'm trapped inside for 14 days. Over here we have my thermometer, which I have to use to do a health check every day. And then also a chocolate egg that I brought as a snack, which should be actually over by my food. <laughs> and then this is like the desk area. I just put my bag there because that's pretty much where all my electronics are. Um, my chargers and stuff like that for my camera. And then there's the phone that you can use to call the desk. So essentially, if you run out of supplies like water or like, toilet paper, you can ring the number and the concierge kind of people have it delivered with your next meal. Overall, the room is really big. Like a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Which is really nice, because that means that there's like plenty of room for you to walk around, to get some exercise. You can use this space on the floor to do a little workout. It is really helpful in terms of just, you know, making you feel better about being in the room for a while. It's nicer if that, you know, it's a, it's a big functional space. When I first got here, this door really creeped me out um, because it's an adjoining door that has a lock but I got freaked out that there was this lock on the other side as well so someone could unlock it if they were in the room next to me and come in. So I put my shoes here, which I know doesn't really seem like much of a deterrent, but the idea was that if somebody else opened the door from that side um, and they like snuck in whilst I was sleeping or something weird and I didn't notice, they wouldn't be able to put the shoes back um, where the shoes were like directly against the door from the other side So like they'd open the door push the shoes and like you can try and move the shoes against the door again But you're gonna have to shut it and exit out that way. So you can't really do that. So I, I figured that that was like a Big brain play to see if someone was trying to get in my room Which only works of course if they're aiming for theft and not something more nefarious so if you walk through here back towards the door which has like a bunch of rules on which basically says you know you're not allowed to leave your room at all no smoking no drinking and you're also not allowed to play loud music which by the way is total rubbish because there is a violinist who has been playing loud music all the time whilst being here so there is a big wardrobe here um but i but i haven't opened it um just because like i said earlier if i put stuff away i know i'm gonna forget it like literally it, it's a recurring problem so you come in here and this is the bathroom Hello. This is all my toiletries and stuff um, and then they give you like soap, body wash. They even give you laundry detergent to hand wash your clothes. So my tap just leaks down here constantly. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to do about that. I don't know if I'm supposed to do anything about that. Um, but <laughs> there it is. Also check the, check the YDYB shirt. It's gone international. If you don't know already, why do I be my sustainable and ethical clothing brand? Uh, one pound from every single order goes to support Ding Dong, which is a South Korean LGBTQ crisis center, um, which is the inspiration behind the drop. It's why there's Hangul on the, uh, on the clothing. So if you want to grab yourself some sustainably sourced, ethically made clothing that also supports a charity, you know, the link is down below. You know where to find it. Toilet, which has no toilet paper currently. Towel, this is the bath. Bathrobe, very nice. There is no shower curtain. There, <laughs> there clearly used to be and they kind of pulled it off. I'm assuming that this is because shower curtains harbor like an insane amount of bacteria and germs. Um, so they were just like, we're gonna get rid of it in order to <laughs> allow for us to not encourage the spread of big Rona. The thing is, these rooms are supposed to be like COVID secure. So they're supposed to be like fully cleaned and sanitized and everything. And I, I kind of trusted in that and I was like, yeah, cool. Um, first day when I got here, I had a shower pretty much straight away because I was super sweaty from traveling. Um, and when I got in the shower, I realized on the side of the bath was some used dental floss that wasn't mine. Um, so <laughs> That scared me a bit. Um, so I did wipe a lot of the surfaces down with <laughs> sanitizer after that, um, which I probably should have done anyway, but I have a lot of faith in people, which I'm now realizing, you know, you shouldn't. Okay, so for the last few hours, I've basically just um, done some work and did emails and then like wrote up some plans for what I'm gonna do for like the rest of my time here. And the announcement's just gone off for me to go get my dinner. I haven't actually filmed any of the video that's supposed to go out tomorrow yet. So this is gonna be an interesting one. Um, <laughs> this is just an insight into just how disorganized I am. 
I have no idea how for like the last two months I've managed to get up a video every single week. And the thing is, is that when I go back to university, it's only going to get worse. So it's like this disorganization and then more stress. It's, <laughs> I don't know how I, I don't know how I'm going to do it. So. <laughs> Right, let's see what 10 out of 10 goodies we've got. Oh, our trusty bread rolls, as always. Flattened cake. I don't know what that is. What is this? So this is dinner. Um, and then it came with this. Which... I, I don't know what that is. Is it cheese, maybe, or custard? Custard or cheese, place your vets. Also, why does it look like a small cat has stood on it? <laughs> there was one more thing in here, which I'm assuming is probably gonna be macaroni and cheese. It's pineapple and cabbage. I'm very confused. I think it's pie. Do we think this is custard or cheese? Should I text Leah and ask her if she thinks, is this custard or cheese? She might know. I wonder what she had for dinner. Right, I, I know I could just try it, right? But hear me out. If I go into it expecting cheese and it's custard, it's gonna taste awful. And if I eat it thinking it's custard and it's cheese, I'll probably throw up. Because I find that if it isn't the thing that I think it is, it tastes gross, even if I originally like the food that it is because I wasn't expecting it. I mean, this pie is nice though. I'm glad there's vegetables. Okay, my sister just replied with lol, which is not helpful. I am going to try this and I just really hope that it's custard. I only have chopsticks left, so I will use my chopsticks. It's not looking the most appetizing. Oh, it smells like cheese. Oh, I think it's custard. Not custard, not custard. Maybe it is. I'm really confused because it tastes sweet once you swallow it. Either way, it's a no from me.